have her in here. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm a massive, massive fan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think have you're that. Sorry? How have you been? I've been all right, but my I think my whole year just got better right now. <laughs> For you, yeah. <laughs> I'm super, super excited. Guys, you already know, this is going to be the best live stream ever because we've got Anne-Marie here. What could be better than that? I, I don't know. I don't know what could be better than that. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Just so you know, just so you know, Anne-Marie, I'm going to be fangirling a lot on this live stream. Too. I'm just going to put you in advance. Yeah. All right, let's okay. go. So, guys, this is an opportunity for us to get to know um, Anne-Marie a little bit better, to get to know uh, what goes on behind the scenes of uh, amazing music. So let's get to know Anne-Marie. Okay, let's go. Okay, Anne-Marie, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just gonna start on with the questions right now. The first question... The first thing I want to know, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know, what inspired you to start singing? Um, I actually started when I was very young. And before I could really sing properly, my sister was dancing and singing too. So I wanted to be like my sister. So I, I was singing around the house. And the older I got, the more love for music I, I had. And then I started writing my own music. So then it was even more passion. Um, but I just know that singing makes me happy. And if I can write a song that makes other people happy, then then, I, then I'm going to carry on, basically. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I've never heard a bad song from Anne Murray. Every song from Anne Murray is like a hit. It's Every song is amazing. So I think oh, you made the right choice. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> what, what what has been the the major highlights of your music career so far? What would you say like is the major thing, uh, major highlight? Um, there's been so many. I feel like Rockabye was a really big moment. Um, that song, and then Friends was really cool with Marshmallow. I also feel like releasing my first album was a really big moment because I I don't really. I don't really know how people feel about albums anymore. I feel like people just listen to singles all the time. But for me growing up, I used to have hundreds and hundreds of albums and I love albums. So releasing my own one was really cool. Um, that was really amazing. I think performing at Glastonbury was really cool. There's just so many, so many. So I, many. I, too many. <laughs> I can imagine, I can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask this one. I'm sure a lot of people want, want to know the answers to this question as well. What has been the most embarrassing moment of your music career? I'm sure there has to be one. Um, I would say this has to be a moment on stage that I had. Um, I, was in, I was actually in New York and I was performing a song with a guy called Will Hurd, who's an amazing singer and, and writer and artist. And we were dancing and he was dancing and he smashed his microphone into my mouth and it chipped my front teeth on stage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so my, my teeth were just like cracked, come out on stage. So I ran upstairs, well, ran off the stage, ran upstairs, looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. So I went downstairs <laughs> and just carried on. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, my that, that's a little bit embarrassing. Okay, uh, you've, I know you've just released your new song, To Be Young, and I'm, I'm crazy about that song. <laughs> like, I've been listening to this song non-stop now, uh, featuring Doja Cat. How excited are you about having people finally get to listen to that song? So excited, because it was, it was meant to come out much sooner than it did because of uh, the whole situation that's been happening. It got pushed back and pushed back. And I was like, I just want people to hear it now. And I'm so impatient. So I'm just so glad it's finally out. And weirdly, it feels like a, such a, a good moment because it feels like a song that just people just need to be free and just like want to feel that freedom. And we definitely want to feel that right now. Yeah. 
I know in the song you you're basically talking about like um, the the ups and downs of being young and the things young people go through. Is that is that how you live your life? Like is that is that how you really feel about that? Yes. I mean, I I definitely live each day as it comes. I have no idea of any plans. I just whatever happens happens and but when I was younger, I I always used to get scared about the question what do you want to be when you're older or what is your plan for life? Because I had no idea and I feel like we need to stop asking kids this question because it's so stressful. No one knows what the future holds. No, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows. And also I'm old I've grown up. I'm I'm older than what I was and I I still have really no idea what's going on. So I feel yeah. like this question is a scary question that we all need to let go of and we just need to be young and messy and free and live yeah. in the moment, basically. I, I agree one hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> so um is that is that is that any specific moment that inspired you to write this song or is it just like you said, just um you just feel we need to be free? I actually it actually came about because three of us were in the studio and we were brought up in all different parts of the world and we were talking about what it was like growing up as a kid in these different places and the different stories that we came up with because I feel like you feel like everyone just has the same life and everyone grows up the same and we we feel the same and we think the same but everyone is so different and it's beautiful and and I feel like we were sharing our experiences from when we were younger but the end result was always that we we want to care less about the worries of the world and just be young and in the moment so that's what it was about really okay i know um, i i i've seen that you've just released the music video for to be young as well how difficult was it uh, be, doing that in the lockdown it was really hard i did it all on my phone so it was yeah it was it was crazy it was a very different experience i was actually really excited about it because and normally at video shoots, you have to wake up really, really, really early. And I was excited to not have to do that. So I, I was looking forward to this, but it actually it actually was harder than what I thought it was going to be. And I I don't think I'd choose to do it like that ever again. <laughs> I mean, I mean, th th this one turned out really great, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can imagine how good it was, yeah. <laughs> okay, um... Out of all your songs, what are the two most special ones that you've released so far? And one being a party type of song and the other one being an emotional type of song. Okay. So I love 2002 because it was written with one of my best friends, Ed Sheeran. And every time I sing that on tour, everyone sings so loudly. So it's my favorite song. Yeah. Uh, the other song that's my favorite is called Perfect to Me. And that is probably, yeah, probably my most personal one because I just went to the studio and wrote down everything, not it, not ever expecting anyone to hear it. <laughs> and it ended up being uh, released. So, yeah, I, I love those two songs the most. Okay. Now, talking about your song, Perfect, Perfect to Me. Every time I listen to that song, it takes me on an emotional roller coaster. I start listening to this, I, once I start listening to this song, I start crying, then in the middle, I start uh, laughing, and I go back to crying again. So uh, I love this song so much. What inspired you to write such a powerful and wonderful song? I feel like when I was younger, I really turned to music to make me feel good about myself. And, and music was such an amazing healer for me that I, I felt like the more honest I can be in a song, maybe the more people I can help and make people feel okay with being different. Because different, I feel like people think when they're different, they're, they're not great or, or they're ugly or, or they feel bad about themselves because they're different. But actually, I feel like when you're different, it's the most beautiful thing ever in the whole world. So I just wanted to put that message out because I needed that when I was younger and I feel like I wanted to give that to, to other people. You're a good interviewer, by the way. You're doing good. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, guys. You heard that from Anne Marie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you ever, do you ever come up with a song, record the song, prepare everything, launch it, and then decide not to go ahead with it anymore? Do you ever do that? Yeah. 
I mean, if I released every song I had written, you'd probably have heard like a thousand songs. So, <laughs> um, do you know what? Some songs just aren't right, and it's hard because because I write all my own songs, I get attached to every single one of them. So it's yeah. like I want to release all of them, but there's so many different reasons why a song isn't right i also feel like there are some songs i write and i'm in a bad mood and they're really angry and i'm like i don't want i don't want people to feel angry when they're listening to my stuff so yeah there are all different types of reasons why a song doesn't get released but it's all for yeah. it's all good yeah i can imagine you you write a song and you're like man i'm gonna release this song but then you you you, you then go back to being in a good mood and you're like nah did i write this yeah. <laughs> Also, I also love asking like my mum and dad if they like it because I feel like they're really good judges of, of yeah. music. So if they say mm, no, not very good, then I'm like, okay, no, not not really so. Okay. Um, your song um, "Ciao Adios." I don't know if um, that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah. "Ciao Adios." It was talking about like a breakup situation. What inspired you to write this song? Was it like a personal experience or just something you just came up with? Yeah, personal experience. Oh, it was it was basically I'd been with someone who was just not very nice. And although you know that they're bad for you, I feel like it's really hard to end the relationship because it's just hard. It's always hard ending a relationship, even if they're bad. So mm -hmm. I was going through this for a long time. I was like, I'm unhappy, but I, I can't say bye. And then one day I just plucked up the courage and I finally said goodbye to someone and I went to the studio and wrote about it straight away. Oh, <laughs> 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 I was done. <laughs> yeah, I was done. I was done. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, there's a lot of songs about boyfriends that they definitely know are about them. <laughs> Imagine being on Murray's ex. I, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to be there, man. You don't want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, are there any artists that inspire you? Yes, so many. I feel like the I feel like the people that are very honest in their lyrics really inspire me. Like Eminem, I feel like is amazing, and I love I love Pink, and I yeah. I just I love people that aren't scared to just talk about real stuff that's going on in the world and not be scared to spark a conversation about something. I think I think music kind of gets forgotten about sometimes and, and it's so important. It's so important. And yeah, those, like Eminem really inspired me when I was younger because he made me think about stuff that I didn't think about. So he's really cool. People like Kendrick Lamar and yeah, loads of people. I'm inspired by so many people. I mean, I, I listened to your song, I can't remember which one of them, but I know you said your sister was a big fan of Eminem and you'd love to take her to see him or something like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, is, there, is there any particular artist you would really love to collaborate with? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to work with Ed Sheeran again. We have actually written a few more songs, so that's exciting. Marshmallow again because he's so cool. Um, obviously, my latest song is with Doja Cat and she's amazing. So working with her was and her voice is just incredible. But I think people that I haven't worked with before, I would love to work with people that are maybe not signed. Just like you know, working with someone who hasn't got a big label behind them and. I, I just love raw talent. So like when I go on TikTok, I always find the most amazing singers. And I and I don't, it doesn't matter to me if they're signed or if they have loads of followers. I, I If they're an amazing singer and they, they, they make me feel something, I want to work with them. So there's been many times where I've been on TikTok and I'm like, I need to contact them and, and do a song with them. Imagine, imagine getting a DM from Anne Murray. I want to walk you. <laughs> And th I mean th that's that's amazing because a lot of a lot of big singers only want to work with other big musicians. They don't want to. They don't see the like up and coming people. So it's amazing that you actually want to work with um, raw yeah. talent. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm up and coming. That's amazing. That, that's another reason to love Anne Marie right there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, your, your music videos are usually very creative and diverse. Do you normally choose the theme for your music videos yourself? And um, how involved are you in the process? I am so involved. I feel like when you are an artist, you need to put as much of you in the project as possible. There are so many people working on the project. They, they are obviously in those positions because they are very knowledgeable and yeah. they know what to do. But I feel like it's my music and I want to put it across in a particular way. So I'm so involved in everything. And yeah, I'm very stubborn, so I don't budge. <laughs> okay, and uh, when it comes to when it comes to making dances for your songs, do you sometimes struggle to come up with something, or is it just natural for you? <laughs> well, I I feel like I I was I did go to dance school, but I weren't. Oh. I I feel like I wasn't trained properly as a dancer. Like I wouldn't go out and say, "Oh yeah, I can dance." <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I tend to just like you know when you're out I instead of doing a full on dance routine I just kind of like move a little bit um, but I, for TikTok dances I get I get a lot of I learn a lot from watching people on here so um, my new one for To Be Young I definitely was inspired by watching people on here so that helped thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm a terrible dancer. Like, wh whenever I dance, I just people just laugh at me. Like, it's, all, it's usually ah. funny. Like, I'm like, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm trying to dance. They're like, oh, you're so funny, guy. <laughs> oh, well, at least you're making people smile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, um, I can't seem to get your song 2002 out of my head. Did anything special actually happen in 2002, or is it just a song? Yeah, I I actually won the world championships in karate in 2002. Yeah. Okay, guys, you don't want to mess with Amari. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely don't want to mess with Amari, right? Yeah. Really? So you do karate as well? Yeah, I started karate when I was nine years old, and Ooh. I just... I love it so much, honestly. I would recommend anyone to try karate, whether you stick to it or not. Just trying it out is, it. it I love it so much. So yeah, in two thousand two, I was um, at the world championships. That's amazing. So two thousand and two, we are we are always gonna remember two thousand and two. Okay, um, your song Ha. Huh? The, the, the song how you wrote about your, your mom. I mean, my mom lives in a very far away country and I've not seen her in several years. So, but every time I listen to your song, how it just, it makes me cry. My mom is on the live stream right now. So she's watching. Oh, <laughs> <hello>. <laughs> so the song, the song makes me cry. What inspired you to write such a powerful song about your mom? Well, I feel like moms are just amazing. And if you have a good mom, that's all you need. So I always feel like I need to tell my mom, thank you. And also when I was a teenager, I wasn't a very nice teenager. I was very naughty. And I, I feel bad for my parents for having to deal with me when I was younger. So I thought every time I see them, I, I say sorry to them for being a horrible teenager. And I thought, okay, I need to stop doing that. And I need to just write a song to tell them how much I love them and I'm sorry for how I was when I was younger. So yeah, that's how that came about. I didn't tell her I was releasing it or anything. It was a surprise. So I can imagine like, her reaction when she heard the song. I can just imagine. She was crying a lot, I think. I think she struggled to to listen past the first verse, which is I don't even know if she she's been able to listen all the way through yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um the next question is, is a very important one. What was the moment or the thing that made you realize that you are now a celebrity? You are now Anne-Marie. What was the moment? <laughs> um, I, think, I think I was in London and I was getting my nails done. Yeah. And someone ran in from, from outside and came up to me and said, I really love your music. 
you're so great. And they did they didn't get a picture or anything, they just ran out again. So <laughs> I think at that moment I was like, Oh, oh. wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's really cool because I feel like I feel like the people that follow me and listen to my music and know who I am, they're so lovely. And whenever they see me out, they don't like, they don't like follow me or like ask me to have a photo all the time or anything like that. They just chat with me and I love that. It's like, it's like I've just got thousands of friends. I, I mean, you, it, feel, it feels like we all are Anne-Marie's friends. You, you're a lot, you, you seem like a very, very lovely person and um, I'm sure that is the reason why your fans are really lovely to you as well. Uh -huh. I mean, what, what you put out there is what you get, so you, you, you seem like a very lovely person, so I'm not surprised at all. Uh, what, what is the most valuable lesson you've learned from your music career so far? Um, to always remember why you started, I think, because you can get, you can get really, I guess, I don't know what the right word is, but there are so I many opinions. Yeah, there are so many opinions, so many ways of how you could do it. Maybe you should look like this. Maybe you should do this type of song. And I feel like when you start listening to all the opinions, you just become like everyone else. So I feel like if you're going to get into the industry and you're going to start creating music, don't try and sound like someone else because it's popular at that moment. You always have to have a part of you in it, which is what makes you different and popular anyway. So um, I'd say to never forget who you are. I think that's important. Amazing. And um, just to emphasize on that, if, um, if if there's anyone watching us right now who would like to become a musician, who would like to become like Anne-Marie, what was one thing you would tell them, apart from um, what you just said, like don't change yourself, what's another thing you would tell them? Um, I'd say don't get wrapped up in what you think it's like, because I, I guess people look into the music industry and think it's all just like, you know, millions of dollars and and yeah. constant, you know, waiters and, you know, like, you feel like you have everything or looking in on it, but it's hard. And although, although I've, I've, I've had us, I've had songs out and, you know, I have social media platforms and stuff like that, I still work really hard. So I feel like you, you should never... You should never forget that in in whatever you do, you have to work hard at it, but you also have to have a lot of fun. So yeah. you have to match the two very, very closely. You have to have fun, but you have to keep working hard. Yeah. Do you do you ever get starstruck when you meet any celebrity now? <laughs> do you ever meet someone they're like? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do actually. I feel like it's more with like more with people that I grew up listening to. I, I think I was next to Pink on the red carpet once and I couldn't really speak properly. So, <laughs> ah! so that happened. But also I get really starstruck by like sports people because I'm a massive sports fan. So I think once I'm, I met David Beckham and I was a bit like, yeah. And I, so it's, it's, it still happens to me, yeah. Okay. And uh, how long does it take you to come up with a new song? Um, well, I've got a really short attention span, so it has to be really quickly, otherwise I I, I leave, <laughs> which um, is quite bad. But I, I feel like it also can come at any time. I feel like most of the time, when I'm on the way to the studio, I end up writing a song in the car on the way to the studio. So it inspiration to write, happens anywhere so you always have to have your phone ready or your voice notes ready to record whenever you can that's what i'd say so do, do you do you ever just like you're about to go to bed and you just wake up in the middle of the night and you're like oh i gotta write this down i gotta write this down yeah <laughs> yeah i do that all the time all the time <laughs> Okay, um, the next question, um, as a social media content creator, I, I have a very busy lifestyle, so I can imagine it's 100 times busier for you being an international superstar. 
Um, do you ever have time to just relax and chill and do nothing, or are you busy one hundred percent like all the time? Um, yeah, it is pretty much busy all of the time. But whenever I can get a moment, I like to go to the gym or. Um, I love getting a massage. So whenever there's like an hour of the day, yeah. that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I can imagine. Okay, and, um, I, I've had the opportunity to meet you in person before, and I know you're a very lovely, bubbly, confident person. Were you always like this, or was there ever a time when Anne Marie was a shy person? Um, I I always feel like I've I've wanted to be bubbly and and I feel like that's how be, my friends would describe me when I was younger but I do feel like I I do suffer with with anxiety and stuff like that so there are moments where I do just want to run away and not speak to anyone and just like be like this so um that that happens really randomly though I feel like when I'm when I'm around people like you or whoever I'm with I I always am smiling and that's because the other person's energy makes me feel happy. So, yeah, I guess it all depends on who who the person is. So, you must have a good energy if you thought that uh, about me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, uh, I I can imagine how. I mean, I can't imagine how it feels like to stand in front of thousands of people all screaming your name like Anne Marie, Anne Marie. Do you <laughs> ever do you ever get nervous before a performance? Yeah, I feel like. I get nervous before every performance. It has never gone away. I've never been able to control my nerves, which is, I would have thought I would have been able to by now, but I haven't. But that's almost the beauty of it. I love that feeling. And I I, I normally just, it's, it's funny because people say to me, oh, what do you do before you go on stage? Are you playing really loud music? Are you drinking? Are you, are you with your your band and I'm like no I'm sitting in silence looking at myself in the mirror thinking what is about to happen <laughs> yeah. so um my nerves turns to me trying to like concentrate and figure out what's about to happen because it's it's such a mad feeling being on stage so you have to control that somehow I think I think it happens to everyone. I mean, I was I was really nervous before coming on this live stream. I'm still nervous right now. I'm still nervous. So, <laughs> so I, I I think it happens to everybody. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you've been to so many countries while on tour. What is your favorite country you've been to, and you definitely love to go back to? Oh, there's so many. I love. Um, I've always loved Holland. I've, 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 I love Jamaica. I yeah. love, um, I love South Korea. That song, it, it relieves me of some sort of stress or something that I'm going through. So I'd always recommend writing down, even write, try and write a song. It's really, it's really amazing. I think I'm going to try that. I'm, I'm probably not going to sing it. I'm just going to write it down. Cause... <laughs> yeah, do it. Because it. it's not going to sound good if I sing it, so I'm just going to write it down and just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what what advice would you give your younger self at the beginning of your career? Um, Probably to worry less about what people think of you, because I feel like I was so worried if people are going to like me or not, and then you realise that that's just impossible. It's impossible for everyone to like you. So you may as well just you may as well just not worry about it and and if you if you are a good person if you're kind and you're always putting out good energy then who cares what people say you know you're a good person so yeah that's what I'd say to myself yeah just be yourself man yeah. and, uh, when it comes to um, releasing albums how do you decide what song goes in an album is it just random or do you like how do you decide that? It's really hard. It is really hard choosing the album songs because, they're, like I said before, I'm, I'm attached to all of them so closely. So I think it really, I really, it really helps when I play the songs to people and get everyone's opinion. And it's like yeah. a tally chart. If people say they like it, then that stays on. And if it don't, then that one goes away. So 
Yeah, and subjects on an album. I don't want a whole album just talking about one thing, like heartbreak. Like, uh, every yeah. song is the same thing. So it has to be very wide range of subjects to talk about too. Okay. And, um, are you are you currently working on any album right now? Yeah, in, in my house. It's been strange because I haven't been able to get to a studio. So I've yeah. been, I don't know if you can see, but I have like, I have all my equipment on my microphone and stuff Whoa. up there. <laughs> I know, and I've been recording in my house and my vocal engineer has been controlling my computer through his computer from his house. Wow. Wow. I know, technology. And I've, and I've been recording at home. So it's it's been really strange, but it's also been really cool because I've felt so comfortable in my own home recording. So it's been pretty cool. Do you, do you play any instruments in? I play a little bit of um, keyboard, like piano, but keyboard, yeah. not, not very well. That's serious, okay. <laughs> okay, and, um, when everyone is allowed to go back on tours, I mean, on tours and gigs, what, what new track are you most excited to play? Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of them. I, I feel like... I definitely have learned from the first album. I feel like the first album was I did never I never expected people to hear it, to be honest. I I never knew how many people were gonna listen to it. And I and, and because of that I didn't really plan on performing the songs on stage and that really affected it because some of the songs from the first album I never sang on stage. Um so in the second album I've I've really made sure that I know that the songs can be played on stage, so I'm I'm excited to play all of them. All of them, okay, okay. Yeah. And uh, when you go on tour, what's your favorite thing to do when you go on tour? Um, my favorite thing is to try foods in every different country. <laughs> I, I, I I just love different cultures, and I and I want to learn hello in and thank you and and all of the the words in different languages i love trying to learn the language because i feel rude going to different lang different countries and speaking english and so I, I really love learning different languages and trying all the different foods um it's just really exciting and i love appreciate i really appreciate different cultures so i, I love experiencing that so do you, do you when, when you go on tour then do you usually like stay extra days there or do you just leave after you're done yeah i try and stay extra days so i can actually experience the place because sometimes you can't do that sometimes you have to fly in fly out fly in fly out and and that's quite sad because you don't really get to to experience it but yeah i try and i try and do that okay have you ever been anywhere in africa yet yeah, I have. I have. I, I think it's, I think mainly South Africa. Okay. But I'm, I, I'm sure I've been to more places. I need one of those maps that you, you, you do that to when you've been to a place. I mean, yeah, or you just throw a pin or something. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, you've released a few other tunes this year, like Birthday, It's My Birthday, and also uh, you were featured on um, the remix of This City by Sam Fisher. Uh, this were major TikTok, major hits on TikTok. Do you have any cool stories about them? Well, I, I love that song. I heard that song through TikTok too, and I just, I thought it was so beautiful. And... Um, I, I heard an interview that Sam did and he said, I would really want to collaborate with Anne-Marie on it. And when I heard that, I wrote I wrote the verse to it and then wow. I recorded it. Yeah, so the, the power of the internet is very powerful, trust me. Um, so yeah, yes. I heard it on TikTok and I heard that he wanted to collaborate with me and I, I did it, yeah. Let's do this, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, your, your song 2002 has had over 1 million video creations on TikTok. Have you watched any of the videos yet? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like addicted to TikTok, so I'm, I'm on here all the yeah. time. Um, I, I've loved loads of videos. There was a dance that was made up to 2002, but I, I, it was too hard for me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. 
I'll have to try one day. I'll try. Okay. I um have you been having fun making TikTok so far? Like are you enjoying the old TikTok experience? Yeah, I love it. It's so creative. Honestly, I I know everyone says this, but I could I could spend hours just watching everyone's creations. And I I just you can you can find anything on here. It, it is yeah. there are endless possibilities. There is so much talent. There are there are comedians, there are dancers there are there are interior designers there are there are so many people on here and so many beautiful gifts that people have that i i've really enjoyed this i've really enjoyed tiktok so i'm happy that it's here do you, do you have any favorite tiktokers that you like or any videos you've seen that you really liked yeah i i i love watching you know when they do like part one, part two, part three, part four, and they're like renovating a house? These yeah. are the ones I get addicted to because you uh, can't okay. stop watching them. <laughs> yeah. So that, those are the ones that I love watching. And also, um, I love watching obviously singers and watching the harmonies that people do when they duet. I, I love hearing that. So, yeah, I, I, I love them. And um, have you ever lost your voice during or after a performance or concert? Yeah, yeah, I I have. I actually went through a really long period where I had a really bad throat, and it was so scary. It's it's like what what am I supposed to do? I I can't do anything. I don't want to mime. I I can't I can't mime on stage, and I can't do that. So it just made me realize that you really have to take care of your voice because. Obviously, after a show, you want to go and celebrate, you want to party, you want to speak with your family and friends, but you, I really have to look after my voice. So you have to be really strict. And when I lost my voice that time, that reminded me that I need to not party as much. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever gone on stage and, and not been able to perform, like just go stage fright? <laughs> No, never. I've I've never no. done that. You know what? It's normally when the the nerves are normally when you're side stage, and then yeah. when you get on stage, all of the nerves Just, disappear. Yeah. So, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know what though? It's so hard to sleep. I feel like I have such a bad sleeping pattern because. The, the amount of adrenaline that you get from it, I just I stay awake for weeks. <laughs> Uh, what 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 goes through your what what goes through your mind when you go on stage? Like, do you do you see the people, or are you just like just in your own world? <laughs> I do I do try and really see everyone. I feel like it makes it more special when you connect with people and you actually look at them and talk. I talk a lot. If you couldn't tell already, uh, I, as well as singing, I speak a lot to people and we have a laugh and. It's just my favourite thing to do, being on stage and, and, and experiencing that is my favourite. There are obviously so many things that are going through my mind. And also, like, I feel like your outfit is so important because sometimes I've been wearing a skirt and it's never a good idea to, to wear anything like that. So I feel like the stage outfit is really important for you to forget about being comfortable. Yeah, so you can just move and do what you yeah. want. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I think I think we've gone through all my questions now. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Thank you so much, guys. If you've not already heard "To Be Young" by Anne Marie, you're really, really missing out. The song is amazing. Like, I just can't stop listening to that song, man. Uh, once I get off the live stream like, right now, I'm just gonna go back to listening to "To Be Young." So make sure you go check it out. And um, Anne Marie, I, it's been amazing. Super amazing having you here. I feel like we are friends and yeah, it's just super, super exciting having you here. And I hope we are able to do this again sometime in the future. And yeah, now, I hope so too. Maybe <laughs> again in real life when we're allowed to, to see each other maybe, in person. Maybe. Yeah. Your music is so amazing. Every song from you is so great. And Thank you. I'm a master. I love you. <laughs> Yeah, now just just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're so lovely. Great example to everybody. And um, yeah, it's so it's so, it's so cool to be able to see you be yourself and not no. A lot a lot of people are trying to 
you know, please the world, be like everybody else. But you're just you're just yourself, and that's that's what I love the most about you. So keep being you. I will. Thank you so much for this. You were so great. Thank you so much, Anne Marie, and um, thank you for coming on the live stream. That's all right. All right, take it. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I'm definitely gonna have a good weekend now. It's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. <laughs> All right, guys, and that is the end. Thank you. Take care. Bye.